Rockers and Recovery Media is dedicated to carrying the message of addiction recovery through music, news, events, and festivals taking place within and not limited to the clean and sober community. You know something, uh, loving day. Got a good friend of mine on the air right now. His name is Robert Gluck. Robert is an attorney, and he does Marchman Act. He does personal injury. He does defense attorney or defense, criminal defense. Uh, Robert's a great guy, and not only is he a, a great attorney, but he is a great mus- musician follower. Hey, Robert, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing just fine, John. How are you? Good, man. So, so hey, listen, let's start this out uh, appropriately. What was the last band you seen? The last show that I saw was uh, John Mayer playing with Dead and Company in New York City. Nice. And it was a great show. John Mayer has mastered the artistry of the deceased and loved Jerry Garcia and has really come on with the band and they've recreated themselves with a bunch of 70-year-olds plus John Mayer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they sound amazing. <laughs> yeah, to me, I, I watch some of the live stuff that they've done. And um, he is amazing. And and you know something? Did you see? Did you see? By the way, did you see that interview with him? Um, and he was talking about how he gets on stage and he feels like the spirit of Jerry's with him. Did you see that? No, I missed it. Yeah, but I wouldn't yeah, be surprised. He really, he really studied. He studied. I, I, where was that? It was in New York City or, yeah, it was New York City or it was in Connecticut. I think they did something in Connecticut, Uh, too. Yeah, well, he does have the spirit of Jerry in him. Yeah, yeah, that's what uh, what, everybody So that's the last bit of music that I saw. And uh, um, thank uh, thank God, on a sad note, uh, you know, my daughter almost just missed being at that music festival in Las Vegas. God rest the soul of all those people, that terrible tragedy. But uh, there was a music festival the week before she was at in Vegas, and that crazy shooter was planning on attacking that festival, but he couldn't get a hotel room. Wow. So he ended up wow. waiting a week. Wow. Yeah. See, I didn't even well, so I didn't know that. Yeah, and then he was that. also looking at, um, looking at another music festival, looking at some... Yeah, so it's... Yeah, it's crazy. That's uh, gun control, a whole other issue, not to be covered tonight. Yeah, well, you know, talking about current events, you know, in the whole news thing, what do you think about the whistleblower, Joe? Uh, So this is the the case of the uh, head of the DEA and uh, Distribution Enforcement Division that got chased out of office by Congressman Marino, right? Is that what you're talking Mm -hmm. about? Yeah, it's the one. Yeah, so that's that's a whole crazy story. So it turns out that, from what I understand, the the distributors of these drugs knew that they were distributing enough uh, pain medication to a pharmacy, for example, in a town that had a population of 2,500. They were distributing enough pain meds for a town of 3 million. And these distributors knew it. And they were basically licensed drug dealers. And, uh, you know, and the chain drug stores are all involved and all of their money corrupted Congress. And they chased out the, the the head enforcer for no reason other than he was too good at his job. And then all the people that worked in the DEA, all the lawyers, all the agency, all took jobs in the drug industry. And then they helped persuade the legislatures to write the law that changed everything. So that's what's going on. And then the crazy thing is the Congressman Marino gets a, gets appointed drug czar for a day after yeah, all that happened. Day. Yeah. for a day yeah. so they were the cause of, of the crisis that we had here in south florida these distributors that were being allowed to distribute to these clinics in west palm beach and fort lauderdale and miami the oxycut how many hundreds of thousands of pills and nobody questioned it mm. and mm. so the law that they had they passed this law that um basically made it impossible to prosecute the distributor so they made themselves immune from prosecution in this law that's hopefully going to get, and it was thrown into a bill at the very last second, and it, it's just, it was just um, it was just a tragedy, and that's what's caused all these deaths. Because if you cut off the source of the pills, it wouldn't have happened. 
you know, 144 people a day that are dying now from opioid overdoses. You know, when you th- when you take this big number of 144 a day, I mean, it's more than car accidents, it's more than gun violence, it's more than, <laughs> I mean, listen, it, it's a staggering, staggering number. And when you look back over the history of this and you start to look at, you know, the, the beginning of the whole 60 Minutes interview, they started out with, you know, Big Farm saying, you know, Big Farm is saying, hey, listen, uh, this is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's non-addictive. Everything's going to be okay. It is the new wonder drug, and there's no addictive side effects. Yeah, you know, for 2001, that's exactly what they said. Exactly. You yeah. know, it's insane, man. It's insane. But now so, that they shut well, off the flow, after all of this has gone on, and the distributors aren't distributing millions of pills to these little pharmacies in Arkansas, has it gotten better? I don't know. No. No, it has not. It's gotten worse because now people are going to the black market and going to heroin. That's the difference because it forced the, it, it shut off that, that, that valve. People are, it, are searching for the next, the next best thing. And yeah, the cheaper I mean, I mean, thing, listen, the next best thing that's cheaper. And that's what a lot Robert, of these folks that we end up doing marchment acts on are doing it yeah. for that reason. It's cheaper than the pills and they can't get the yeah. pills anymore. And here's the thing that but are really there is, still are, are there still are there still people that are addicted to the pills or are we mostly dealing with heroin and phenylalanine here? It, it opioid the opioid crisis is still alive and well, and there's still you know uh, pill mills out there that are still handing out the prescriptions and the doctors are okay. handing out the prescriptions and the pharmacies. Now are they making changes? Absolutely. Is it like the wild, wild west? It absolutely is, in my in my opinion. You know, so I mean, here's here's the reality. You go through this and you see. I mean, every day, Robert, I go online and I'm looking and I see loved one after loved one after loved one posting, "Hey, lo- I lost my son. I lost my brother. I lost my daughter. I lost, you know, I lost a family member." And right. what I continuously see in this thread is we did everything that we could possibly do. Now, not a lot of states have the Marchman Act. Um, just, if right. you can, give a brief synopsis on what the Marchman Act is so that way people understand what their, what their, you know, their you know, legal obligations are here in the state of Florida to be able to help somebody if they, have, if they want to. Well, we, with all the political stuff we were just talking about, what we're left with is people either are going to get the pills or they're going to get to the heroin, but either way, they're going to be addicted and they're going to need help. So what the Marchman Act does, it allows a family member, to, and it's only in Florida, not in any other state, unfortunately, but um, Hal S. Marchman got this law passed in Florida, and it says that if someone's unable to handle their own affairs due to a drug addiction or alcohol, not mental health, but drugs are alcohol only. And that becomes an issue when people are dual diagnosed. But if as a result of a drug or alcohol addiction, they're unable to handle their own affairs, a family member can hire me. I step in, we bring them in front of a judge, we force them into a detox, we force them into treatment, and we save a life, hopefully. And the key is, it does go before a judge, and we do have to show that there's good cause to believe that they're unable to handle their own affairs, and it's usually pretty easy. These folks are pretty far gone. By the time their family member comes to me for help, it's pretty obvious as soon as the judge gets a look at them that they've got an issue and that they need detox and treatment. And most of the time they concede it. As soon as they see on there, we're ready to litigate that we have the hearing, we're ready to go, they usually just say, okay, I'll go to treatment. And that's what we do. We try and save lives one case at a time. But a lot of people can't afford to hire me is the sad thing. But I'm happy to help those that can and those that can't. I give them free advice. I tell them how to get the package from any clerk's office in all the counties in Florida. And they can, you know, muddle their way through it with the help of the clerk or hire a lawyer to do it easily, but easier but in any event, the ultimate goal is, is to get in front of a judge and force them into treatment if they won't go voluntarily. Hmm. On the um, and, and that being that do. being said, that there is so that way people know, as we're talking right now, there is an option to be able to help legally here in the state of Florida. If you have a loved one that's suffering, you can give them help. 
you can go to uh, right. uh, Robert. Give them your uh, email or your website, so that way they know where to go. Well, it's robertgluck.com. That's my name. Like good luck, robertgluck.com, and my um, you know, or they can call the office at eight seven seven Gluck Law, or they can look online on the internet. Uh, Robert Gluck. Uh, my offices are in Plantation and in Naples. There's a handful of lawyers that do Marchman acts, not very many. Um, some charge significantly higher fees than my firm does, but many folks can't even afford my fees, and I understand that. So if anyone has an issue with a loved one that's in need of treatment under the Marchman Act, I'll certainly tell you what you need to do if you can't hire me. And that's a public service that I end up giving to 90% of the people that call. But I understand why. They spent so and, much and money you know, so- for, for these people over the years, and and these are the fan, these are the parents that have spent their le- their retirement money to keep their kids alive, and it's sad. I mm-hmm. understand. The other the other aspect of this too is is that everybody across the board, one time or another, um, always at the end. Um, it might not be so much at the beginning of of active addiction, but I know at the end of active addiction. Everybody has consequences, and some of them are criminal. And one of the things that I want people to understand is that Robert has been uh, around that arena uh, for many, many years and started the very first drug court in South Florida in Miami and is able to help in that way too. See, I think I think that if you have somebody that can navigate the system, you can also get help that way too if you get in front of the right judge on a criminal matter and you know it's a possession charge and you want treatment there's ways to be able to work that out through the court systems too is that correct robert right because almost there's the same hammer that you want to have over someone's head in a criminal case if they got arrested for a charge that the punishment might be some sort of probation with treatment for a drug addiction that the power of that is if they violate or they don't comply with treatment, they could go to jail. So you're hoping as the criminal defense lawyer, if they're guilty of the crime and the best thing to do or the right thing to do for them legally is to negotiate a plea and get them on probation with treatment, you hope that the treatment will, with the threat of jail, if they violate, will will force them to comply. Same effect with the Marchman Act. If they don't comply with the Marchman Act, you have a judge issue a rule to show cause and have them held in contempt of court, and they would go to jail for violating the Marchman Act order to stay in treatment. So you can, without having to wait for them to get arrested or, or end in jail, you could do the Marchman Act, which is almost a mirror image of drug court without the criminal case. Ah, okay, it's very cool. What it is. Yeah, oh, very so cool. I could do both, right. and if they get arrested, I can represent the family. The family can hire me to represent their, their loved one, and then if it's appropriate, treatment can go through the criminal case. And then, of course, John, when I'm not doing Marchman Act cases and saving people's lives, I'm, uh, I'm helping people that get rear-ended on their way to their Marchman Act lawyer's office, and then I help them with their personal injury case in addition to everything else because I want to be a full-service law firm. I, I, listen, and, and here's the other thing. If, if you know, Just to keep everybody up to date on current events, um, it, Robert now believes in the power of prayer. Yes, I do. I believe in the power of prayer because my friend, John Hollis, put in a word with God for me right before I went to trial about a month and a half ago on a case that Travelers Insurance offered $100,000 on. That was an auto accident case. And John knows what happened because right after I got a jury verdict of $1.2 million, I called John and said, thank you, John, because of your prayer, I won. And I know that was it because the last thing I did before I started to prepare for the trial was I saw John's post that said that he put in a prayer for me. So whatever God you prayed to, it worked. So that's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is good stuff. You know, if you if you're tuning in, we're talking with attorney Robert Glock, and um, you know, here's here's the cool part. Not only has uh, it turned into a great friendship over the years, and not only was he my criminal defense attorney at one time. But it's turned into a great, great friendship, and, you know, he's been uh, 
been there for myself and rockers and recovery and my family and and uh, just a, a great guy and highly recommend Robert and his services, but most importantly as a friend, one day at a time he supported me in a huge way and you know, never uh, really publicly said it, but thank you, Robert. You're you're a great guy. Thank you, John, and for for everything that you've done with Rockers and Recovery and everything you've done for the addiction community to really help everyone and to be a sounding board for people and to be a resource for people to help people and to find them the place that they need to be over all these years after you've struggled with your own recovery and you've made a difference in other people's lives. So you've contributed a lot to this community. And I thank you on behalf of my community because I grew up and was born and raised down here. and You've saved a lot of lives down here and helping people. Well, we appreciate that, man. And, you know, hey, listen, all glory to God, but one of the things I do know is that if you don't put the footwork in, none of that can happen. It's just like yourself, you know what I mean? You go out there, you give you give back to your community, and it's, and it's a footwork, and, and and you take it as it comes, and, and in the end, you know, we're helping people, and that's what, you know, we're supposed to be doing. That's what it's all about. Thank you. So, I agree. So, well listen, in in the in the end, um, we are going to be having us a party, and that's November 10th and 11th, and it's going to be at the Pompano Beach Group, or I'm sorry, the 101 Club in Pompano Beach, and it will be um, November 10th and 11th, and Robert will be at both events. So come hang out with us. He's going to talk a little bit about what he does, but most importantly, he's there to answer questions. If you have any questions in regards to helping a loved one, he will be there for both nights, or both actually both uh, days. So John, I've November. been practicing. Good. I've been practicing. Good. Can I do a cymbal solo? I'd like to do a cymbal Absolutely. solo. Absolutely. <laughs> have you seen <laughs> okay. that commercial? Is that hilarious? <laughs> that commercial. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, with the one with the little bell. Yeah. yeah, the triangle. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> the triangle, exactly. I was thinking I could do that with my eight seven seven Gluck Law T shirt on, but no, it's a crazy thought. Who would want to see a T shirt that said eight seven seven Gluck Law? Oh my God, that's hilarious, dude. And and he's a great comedian too. He he does stand up also. <laughs> So, hey, listen, again, November 10th and 11th at the 101 Club. Come on out, hang out with us. It's in uh, Pompano Beach, Florida. We got uh, a great, great lineup of bands. And at the end of the night, we're going to have the Rockers and Recovery All-Star Band with uh, special guest Peter Keys from Leonard Skinner is going to be playing. They're going to do about an hour set. And, um, you know, but again, all through the day, we got some great rock and roll bands, November 11th. The night before, on the 10th, it's really a meet and greet for the community. Anybody in South Florida is welcome. It's free. There's a full sit-down dinner and hangout, and, you know, you can, you know, just kind of listen to what's going on in the community and get some information, maybe to help a loved one. And there's some music from Sobriety Unplugged. So we're looking forward to uh, having both of those events and having Robert there and, you're tuning in tonight you want more information robert what's your website again just so they know it's robertglock.com correct yes it is and or they can just um google my name and they'll find my website right away or 877 gluck law 24 hours a day and i do the marchman act cases i do the criminal defense cases and of course i do my personal injury cases that help subsidize all the free legal advice i give and give out on all the marchman act cases so that's my service to the community. Very cool, man. We appreciate it, Robert, and thank you for being on the show. We look forward to uh, doing more with you and uh, the whole legal aspect and, and just getting on and talking about the you know cool stuff. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the event. I'll see you in a few weeks. All right, brother. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Robert Gluck, have a great night. Thanks. Guys. John Hollis with Rockers and Recovery. Check out rockersandrecovery.com. You know, I want to thank, uh, of course, all of the people that make Rockers and Recovery possible, the media aspect of this. Of this. We're going into 2018 very rapidly. It is the 10-year anniversary of Rockers and Recovery. Rockers and Recovery started in 2008. 
it is going on our 10-year anniversary. We want to thank everybody out there that has supported Rockers in Recovery. We also want to take the time to let you know that through 2018 and moving forward, you know, we put on 29, this will be our 29 musical production since 2011. <clears throat> Rockers in Recovery, nine times out of ten, puts on these events, and they're free to the community, and we make them open to everybody. And in the end, we make no money. Everybody's like, well, you're making a bunch of money off this. No, there's no money being made on free concerts. And in the end, what we normally do is have, of course, uh, uh, you know, a deficit that is covered by the radio and media aspect of the company, which is Rockers and Recovery Radio and Productions. So that being said, after 29 of them, we feel that moving forward, we really need to concentrate on making Rockers and Recovery media healthy. So that way, maybe one day we can return to doing free stuff for the community and make uh, difference, And we hope that you tuning in, listening to shows, and coming online for free access to people like Robert and other folks that we can turn you on to, it's going to help you in the long run or help your family member in the long run or help the community in the long run. Well, that's the new direction. So please, go to rockersandrecovery.com, and on the right-hand side, you're going to see two downloads One of them is for, uh, of course, both are for the Rockers and Recovery live stream radio station. We ask you please to download um, and send your friends to download too. You can do it on iPhone. You can do it on Android. Everything is right there. And tune in with us. Hang out with us. Let your friends know about us. And most importantly, have a blessed night. We want to thank everybody for tuning in. And I am going to uh, choose a song tonight uh, from a gentleman that I really, really care about. His name is Paul Wilson, great friend of mine, and all it really takes is a song that Paul wrote with some friends. So you guys check it out. God bless. It's been a great, uh, great evening uh, spending it with uh, my friends. Thanks. It all came down just like a slow motion crash Can't remember the details, they all went by so fast Now I know I made a few mistakes I guess that's all it really takes Work slowed down and things began to slide. Began to slide. Started drinking in the day, looking for a place to hide. I came home one night by my bags outside the door. I guess she didn't want me there no more. I didn't realize how much my life changed on that day I was watching my whole world slowly slip away The will is strong until it breaks I guess that's all it really takes Did our jobs and hung out down at the bar. Down at the bar. Got wasted every night, sleeping out back in my car. I staggered down late one night. My car was gone. I knew it was time for moving on. Days passed and I learned the way of the streets 
Pray they'll cut you for a buck and take the shoes right off of your feet. But the others were just like me. We all had to live our fate. I guess that's all it really takes. I couldn't understand how I let it all slip away. I miss my old life, missed it more each day. The will is strong until it breaks. I guess that's all it really takes. Weeks turned into months, but the booze just blurred the time. Just Handling on the corner with my Jesus loves you sign Someone told me I could change There were steps I could take The idea made my soul just ache So I went to a meeting Told myself it was just to see when I heard their stories, I knew they were just like me. I found a place where I felt safe. And that is what it really takes. I'm so glad I realized that I could change my way. Old oh, places and people, I had to put them away. A few new friends and one good book. And that is what it really took. A few new friends and one good book. By the grace of God, it took. Hey, Tim Ryan here with the Man Recovery Foundation. Just got in from Arkansas. Want to let you know, Rockers in Recovery is having a big event November 11th at the 101 Club in Pompano Beach, Florida. Going to have a ton of music, fellowship. I have the opportunity to come down. I get to speak, share a little bit of hope. Really excited about this event. So if you are in the Florida area, Palm Beach down to Miami, Lake Worth, whatever, head to the 101 Club. Starts at uh, 2 in the afternoon, $10 entrance fee. Come on in, share some fellowship. Again, I will be speaking there. Really honored to be able to come in and be a part of this. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can check us out on Facebook, From Dope to Hope, or check out our foundation, www.amirf.org, or for my full-time career, I'm a National Outreach Director for Transformations Treatment Center out of Delray Beach. We will also be a sponsor for this event. Look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day. Rockers and Recovery Radio is based on opinion only and is not meant to treat or diagnose any health or mental health issue of any kind. If you feel you need help for any health-related issues, please contact a physician or mental health professional. The opinions expressed by our guests are not necessarily those of Rockers and Recovery.